Burnett, who's the director of the Urban Age, as I'm sure you all know, but also chief advisor on architecture and urbanism to the Olympic Delivery Authority in London. Thank you very much, and uh, wonderful to see so many of you here and um, to see familiar faces from all over the world. I gather that um, we've had people arriving in the last 24 hours from uh, Quito, from Sao Paulo, from Tokyo, and from your neighbors here in London by comparison. So it's wonderful to have such a real international um, event. And again, I thank Wolfgang Novak and Joseph Ackermann for allowing us to do this. I want to do two things in my uh, allocated time. One is to talk just very briefly about how does this conference work. Some of you have been at them before, uh, some of you haven't. Um, and then speak about the themes which have um, cut across the conferences to date, but most importantly the themes that I think are relevant to this discussion about Indian cities coming out of the intense research done by the LSE team, but together with Tata Institute of Social Sciences and others, which is very much summarized in this document, which is uh, the newspaper which was given out to all of you. Some of it is, in fact, on the walls over there, just some summaries. But importantly, in January, we will be submitting a big, fat report, which we hope to present to the Prime Minister's office. And I know that one of his key advisors is here. Now, one of the first things I must say is that please, if you have a pink version of this, tear it up and use the green one. But I see that most of you do have a green one. There are just a few changes uh, to it. Uh, and um, I think it's important that you stick to this document to make sure that you see how the program actually works throughout the day. Basically, it's a two-day conference. We hope that to see as many of you here throughout the two days, not just for your session and then leave. Uh, and there are six sessions which I'll go through in a second. We expect about 50 people to speak, that is, as main speakers, as um, some of the urban age experts, and also people we have asked to respond and this is where Howard, who's very good at this, I have to warn you, uh, has to show your pieces of paper there, maybe, Howard. Your, he's got cards which tell you you've got five minutes, three minutes, or go away uh, because you're going on for too long. Now, this is very important because to be respectful, really, to all of you, it's important to keep within the time frame so that we get as much out of the mix of people and the interdisciplinary range of people who are here. So... While we will have speakers who are allocated between 20 and 10 minutes, uh, depending on the subject, the respondents are asked to talk for about two, three, four minutes. Please stick to it. It's very, very important. Uh, we will ask some of the respondents to uh, talk uh, from the floor. They've already been primed. And others, we will be circulating cards. And if you have burning issues that you would like us to raise, and if we have the time, Chairman, uh, we will have those cards at the front and perhaps ask some of those questions. So that's more or less how it's done. The structure of the event, we're running a little bit late as we've said, is to have these six themes which really deal with the big issues that cut across all cities, but particularly the Indian cities that we have been researching. We're going to uh, start with this session to talk about the global context uh, and the impacts of globalization on Indian cities. We then move to the critical thing is given all this, how do you create a future of a city? What role does making a vision and getting the politicians to follow that? We will then look at the key issue of urban inequality. Joseph Ackerman has already used the statistics which are very evocative, but how do you house the urban poor? And we're going to be doing something which is perhaps controversial, perhaps difficult, to go from the macro to the micro, to look at the proposals currently on the table for Daravi one of the biggest slums in the world, but also one of the richest textures uh, in terms of the life of the city and the economy of this city, and that's where we will be concluding today. Tomorrow, Nick Stern and Sheila Dixit will be talking about climate change, both globally and in terms of the innovative experiences of Delhi. We will move to the critical aspect of then how do you do it when you set all these agendas? How do you actually plan cities? And we will be concluding which is very much one of the key themes of this conference as a whole, as the series of conferences, by bringing in city leaders from Jose Serra, the governor of Sao Paulo, who in fact will host the next event, Enrique Peñalosa, representatives from London, from other cities around the world, to talk together with their Indian colleagues from four or five of the cities that we've been working in to really 
have a summary of where we can go next and what lessons have been learned. But let me try and describe very briefly what lies behind the issues. What have we learned? What would we like to share with you uh, as a result of the research we've done, which might leave a legacy? And this is very much one of the ideas of Wolf and Novak in particular, that we leave something behind. We don't just come and go. I think that's very important. And the institution of the Deutsche Bank Urban Age Award, which was uh, awarded yesterday, I think is the beginning of that relationship. We've heard about these statistics. I'm not going to go there again. It's clear. But this is what happens when you look at the world in half close your eyes. This is where human habitation has left its footprint. And you can see that's actually in the areas, obviously, of the Indian subcontinent that human habitation is at its most dense and focused. But probably the most important thing, and this lies at the heart of the agenda, the intellectual agenda of the urban age, is understanding what all these numbers mean in terms of the reality of people on the ground. Now, I'm an architect, so before I say what I'm about to say, architects don't get offended, please. But this is a typical view of a typical global city. It happens to be Caracas, and it's a picture I took from a helicopter. And on my left, tower blocks, buildings, basically you see what architects do. Not very good buildings, some of them actually, frankly, ugly. That's not the point. The key point is that the space between the buildings doesn't constitute city, or what Sassen calls cityness. There's no sense of the relationship between the buildings and the public space, the glue that makes society in a way possible. Next to that, you see what transport planners do. Again, don't be offended. Transport planners design cities as pieces of transport to get people from A to B, sometimes not thinking about what severance that has on existing communities. Community. So you have architecture, transport planning, and then that mass of 250,000 people is what people do. And that is something which is highly relevant and poignant, of course, to the Indian context. And I think if the urban age is about something, it's about trying to create a cross-section across this photograph in understanding and relinking, perhaps, disciplines that for too long have never spoken. Because you might think that this is a Photoshop image. In other words, this has just been constructed by me to make an effect. It's not. It's an aerial view of uh, Eliopolis in Sao Paulo. And I'm sorry to say this, Governor Serra, I'm using your city as an example of perhaps what not to do. But on the left, you have a, uh, a place which has its own life. It has its own identity, but it has very little water and very few sewers and lacks basic infrastructure. 